Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my channel. I hope you're doing well. My name is Leon and today I want to talk to you about organizing fonts. Organizing fonts is something not a lot of people do actually. Uh, and what I mean by organizing fonts is I mean using a specific piece of software to essentially make folders or categories where you put like specific fonts into. For example, let's say you're working on a design project and you're looking for a sans serif font and if you don't organize your fonts, you'll probably most of the time end up using the drop down menu from Photoshop and just scrolling endlessly until you find something you desire and basically wasting time looking through fonts that are not even, for example, sans serif or whatever style you might be looking into. I personally consider fonts as files on my computer. I mean, essentially they are files on your computer that you install, but it's good to have that mentality because then I treat them as any other file on my computer, AKA I organize them. them. Organizing fonts can be really beneficial later down the line because once you will have like hundreds of fonts installed and they will all be organized, you will thank yourself. So just follow along with this tutorial and let's go. Today I'll be showing you around Fontbook, which is a built-in uh, app for organizing fonts on Mac OS and I tried many third-party apps and honestly this first-party built-in app Fontbook is it does a, such a nice job at organizing fonts hence the reason I'm making a video about it so let's dive right in all right here we are on my desktop and the first thing to do is open up Fontbook and to do that you can just do a simple spotlight search for uh, Fontbook hit return and uh, Funbuck will Funbuck Funbook <laughs> will open up. So the first thing you'll be greeted with is just a list of all your fonts installed on your PC. So it's pretty easy to figure out what's going on here. So all the way here on the sidebar we have all three types of collections, which I will cover later on in the video. In the middle we have fonts in the set collection, and then here we have font previews. So what you can do usually, what, what people do is they open up Fontbook and then they would just like scroll through fonts until they see something they like and use that in the project instead of using the drop down menu from let's say Illustrator or Photoshop. All right, let's begin with uh, the collections. So you will already have some pre-installed collections or should I say pre-made collections, not pre-installed. And collections are basically folders for your uh, fonts. It's the way to organize them. When you install them, you can open up Fontbook and then you all you can do is just drag them in. For example, let's create a new collection. I'm just going to name it test. And if I go back to all fonts, except for example, if I want to add Arial into the collections folder, all I do is just drag it in and here it is. It's in my Arial folder or my test collection. Sorry. And this is basically how you add fonts in. So I can also add, for example, my own font, shameless plug. We can add aerospace in. And now I have both of these uh, fonts right here in my collection. Now to remove the collection, I just hit delete and uh, I can remove the collection. However, uh, important thing to note is it does not remove your fonts. So your fonts still stay installed in your computer. It just deletes the folder that where you organize them essentially. So it doesn't uh, modify your fonts in any way. It's just like a placeholder where you can organize your fonts. Next up, we have libraries, which are these three top menus up here. And essentially the only difference between libraries and collections is that when you delete a library with a font inside of it, uh, you actually remove that font from your computer. That's why we have these three presets. We have all fonts, which basically displays all fonts installed on your computer, all 320 of them. Uh, then we have computer library, which shows all the fonts that came pre-installed on your computer. And then you have the users folder, which contains all the fonts you installed. And to create a new library, all we, all we have to do is walk up over to the menu bar and hit file, new library. And this is going to create our new library and let's just name it new 23. I'm not news 23. Fine. Let's go with that. And let me install railway here. So I'm going to open up the railway folder again, and I'm just going to drag the font inside of it and install it to my computer. And as you can see, the font is perfectly installed and it works. I can use it and I can also create a new collection again. So let's create new one. And what I can do here is I can actually take the railway and add it in and organize it into my collections. So you can still use your fonts from your libraries and you can still organize them in collections if you really want like a redundant way of um, categorizing things in font book. Now watch what happens when I delete 
this library with this font installed inside of it. When I delete this folder, the font goes with it. So if I go back to new, you'll see that the railway is gone. So that's the main difference between libraries and collections. In libraries, when you add a font into it, that's its home, that's kind of its root directory. And if you remove that, you also remove the font. Whereas collections, you just relink your fonts into them and you organize them and fonts still stay under your, under your default user library. Okay, I have a small confession to make now. I haven't organized my fonts in the past few weeks and I did install a few of them that I still haven't organized in one of my collections here. So what if you wanted to use collections but you had hundreds of fonts to categorize? What if you could do it in a way that it would actually be automatic? where you wouldn't have to do anything. Well, you can. That's where these smart collections come into play. So they are basically collections, but for lazy people. That's how I like to, uh, in a nutshell, that's basically what it is. Because they're, uh, they act exactly as collections, so they don't act as libraries, they act as collections. So you can add fonts into, or you actually can't add fonts into them because it's an automatic collection. Uh, let me create an example and you'll see what I mean. So we can go up to the menu bar, go to file, new col new smart collection, sorry. And now here, I'm gonna create an unnamed collection just because I'm boring. And now here you will see we have some conditional statements. So if I wanna, for example, create a smart folder that's only gonna display sans serif fonts, what I can do is go, for example, if any of these following uh, sub queries are true, then it's gonna display the following font. So let's go and add a uh, design style. And I'm gonna say if design style is sans serif, then display it in this collection. And all I can do now is hit OK. And now it's just gonna vomit all sans serif fonts that are installed on my PC without me dragging all of these fonts individually into a collection. So this is a powerful way to organize fonts if you're really lazy and you just don't wanna spend some time organizing each individual font into its appropriate collection. However, there are some drawbacks to smart collections because they are completely automated. You cannot interfere and for example, add a font in on your own if, you're, if you wanna do that. That's why you would probably use collections. For example, I have, if you noticed, I have a web font folder here, which is uh, for Google fonts that I downloaded. And I can't have a specific thing like this in the smart collection because it doesn't know that it's all from Google fonts. I can't make a smart collection that would only display Google fonts. So that's why you would, for example, use a regular collection instead for something a little more specific, something that cannot be automated. So if we walk back up to our smart collection, uh, we can still edit it though. So we can just go right click on the collection and hit edit smart collection. And we can change this uh, conditional here. We can change it to anything. Maybe you wanna, have a specific smart collection for a specific language. So for example, if we include English, I can hit OK. And now it's gonna display all fonts that support the English language, which is really cool. I am scrolling the wrong thing. Now, where would you use all these three different types of uh, categories in FontBook? Well, libraries are specifically useful if you, for example, maybe a client asks you, hey, can you like fix this post drop for me? And they have some special fonts they used and they sent you those fonts and you only want to have them, for example, temporary on your PC. You don't want to, you don't want those fonts to take up your space or you just don't want them in general after you're done with a specific project. That's where you would create a new library. And once you do, for example, I am working on a new poster. So I'm gonna call this a poster library. And here I'm gonna install the railway because I know that I'm just gonna use it for this single time poster and never again, poor railway. I don't know what, what that font did to me. And I can install it here and use it on my PC. And I export the final project, I sent it off. I no longer need this font. All I, gotta, all I can do to get rid of this font is just delete the library and the font goes along with it. As for collections though, you also could use uh, the same principle, I guess, for your poster and install the font regularly and then add, for example, railway or let's just add something else that it's installed. For example, bitter, add it into the poster uh, collection and you could also have them here specifically if you want to keep those fonts forever but you also want to delete the collection later on without the font going down with it. So but if you do want to delete the font right along with the library 
or the collection, you do want to use the library because once you delete the collection, it only deletes the collection. It does not remove the font. And there we go. That is a quick look at Frontbook. Well, folks, that's going to do it for this video. I hope this helped you out a ton. I hope it did give you some good insight on how to organize your fonts. Do you organize fonts already? If so, I would really love to hear how you organize your fonts and general organization system you have in place. So leave those in the comments down below. I'll be sure to read it. And I'm going to see you next time. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos I should make, leave those in the comments down below as well. And uh, that's going to do it. I'll see you next time and take care.